Good afternoon. Thanks for joining me on the Jenna Colburn Show. So happy to have you. Please go ahead, hit that share button right down there and let all of your friends know that we're live Wednesdays at 2 o'clock on Lakeland Connect. And whether you're watching live or you're watching the program a little later on, thank you so much for joining us and helping build this community. The goal is really to empower other women and grow a community where you can find local resources right here in the Lakeland that are female focused. Um, one thing I wanted to start off with, starting next month in May, we have a brand new sponsor, Pure Athletics. We're gonna be doing a new segment called For Her, where I will be taking a peek at some nonprofits and service groups that help females in our area. So we'll either be popping by, we'll have them coming in through Skype, or they'll be in studio, but we have some really great service groups here in the Lakeland, and some amazing groups that really focus in on females. So we're going to be checking those out, all thanks to Pure Athletics. Today, I have a really great show lined up for you today. Uh, Anne Chislett is in studio with me. Anne is a mental health advocate, specifically, or... Um, specifically in the Lakeland region, she really advocates for mental health and brings awareness to some of the cracks in the system that appear in rural Alberta. So she's a big advocate there, and she is also unfortunately a victim of suicide. Her son Tyler, six years ago, died of suicide. So Anne is going to be in to talk about her son, her son's life, as well as the legacy that he left through the Tyler Chislett Memorial Fund. We're going to be talking about the fund and what it does to help people here in the Lakeland and how you may gain some assistance from it as well. That's coming up in just a little bit. We also will be checking in at Core Juice, which is just downstairs, actually, at the Bonneville Business Center. So they opened at a new location. They've expanded their business, and we're going to be chatting with Brandy and finding out what's going on at Core Juice. I'm also checking out uh, what's happening in Coach Shireen Sutherland's life. She is going to give us some tips on how to really break through that busy cycle where you're putting yourself last repeatedly and you're not taking any time for yourself. She's going to help us break that cycle and talk about about little tips that you can do in your everyday life to take moments for yourself and find ways to have those breaks and really mentally recharge. We are also going to be chatting with one of my favorite people, Dr. Catherine King, ND. She is giving us some tips on fiber. What is fiber? Why do we need it? And are you getting enough? That's all coming up on the Jetta Colburn Show. Make sure you stick around. Up next, we're sitting down with Ann Chislett. We'll be right back. Tellier Pharmacy is proud to be celebrating 50 years in the community of Bonneville. And we're even more proud to help grow the community through our local supporting local initiative. Come into Tellier's and you'll find a vast selection of local products made right here in the Lakeland region. We have unique gifts and specialty items along with everything you'd expect to find at your local pharmacy. At Tellier's you'll get that small town service with a smile compassionate local pharmacists who are dedicated to the community's health and wellness. Tellier Pharmacy offers the Simple Program, a brand which synchronizes your medications with unique packaging designed to make your life and your medication simple. While you're shopping, be sure to grab a specialty coffee from our 1929 coffee bar stocked full with drinks, soups, sandwiches, and more. Celebrate 50 years with Tellier's local supporting local. Good afternoon and welcome back to the Jenna Colbarn Show, joined in studio by Anne Chislett. Anne is a mental health advocate as well. Her son is a victim of suicide. And thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. It's uh, always an honor to have the opportunity to speak about Tyler. Your son, Tyler, it's um, just past the sixth anniversary of his death. Yes. Um, let's talk about Tyler. Oh, makes me <laughs> makes me smile he was uh tyler was our only child um he was uh gentle and beautiful uh he was an academic an athlete a traveler and a humanitarian is how i try to sum him up it's difficult to mm -hmm. sum somebody's life up in a few words but those would definitely be um some phrases that I would use for him. Um, I say an academic because uh, 
education was always very important to him. He was very bright. Um, he was attending university, studying politics uh, and, and law. He wanted to be a lawyer. I say he's an athlete because he was a downhill ski racer. He slalom ski raced, which he taught me to ski because I had no clue. When he told me that was what he wanted to do, I was like, no, I don't even think that exists in our area. <laughs> but sure enough, we have a team in Coal Lake that uh, the Blizzards. And yeah, so, he was an active member with the Kinnisoo Blizzards. Yes, yes, he was. And uh, so he... That allowed him the opportunity to travel throughout Alberta and race. And when Tyler was skiing, he was free. He loved, loved to ski. He was amazing. Um, and I say he was a traveler because he always, um, he had this passion to, to see the world. And we did our best as parents to, to show him uh, what we could. But he took the initiative himself as well. He uh, traveled to Ecuador um, with the Me to We project and to help build schools and um, improve the life of the people there. Uh, he did that on his own, paid for it on his own, and uh, like I said, took the initiative to arrange everything. Uh, when he graduated, he backpacked through Europe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so he was... Um, he was just curious. Mm -hmm. he, he knew there was more than just what he saw in Alberta or Canada. He had, saw the bigger picture and he wanted to experience that. By all accounts, Tyler sounds a, like a very well-rounded um, young adult. He's yes. off in university. Mm -hmm. He has interests outside of his own. He is giving back to his community, uh, mm -hmm. friendships. He is active. He's active athletically. Um, was there any indication to you that something was going on behind the scenes with Tyler? <clears throat> yes, uh, definitely. In hindsight, mm -hmm. uh, hindsight is torture in my mind. At the time, um, this is really difficult um, to talk about because I feel like I um, didn't see the true picture. Tyler uh, was very good at hiding his pain and he suffered in silence for a long time. But as I say, in hindsight, um, there were signs, um, I would say around 15, 16, where um, he, he struggled with finding himself and figuring out um, what it is that he wanted to do and how to do it. And he kind of struggled with that internally more so um, than other people, mm -hmm. I would think. He was always searching for something. And um, I kind of thought it was just a growing pain. But uh, when Tyler turned 18, uh, his last year of high school, uh, his health issues became very evident. Um, he cut out his friends. Um, he limited his relationships to his girlfriend. Um, and he, he isolated himself from everything. He stopped skiing. And when he stopped doing that, that was a real red flag for us as his parents because that was something that he loved. Um, he started sleeping a lot. Um, he had no... Uh, his motivation would come in spurts, I would mm -hmm. say. It wasn't always um, in that low mode, but um, it was definitely uh, a, big, a big part of his illness. Um, he, we um, started to take Tyler at that point to counseling and and some of the local mm -hmm. resources. Um, we didn't know uh, what was out there because we had never dealt with mental illness in our, in our family or uh, I didn't know anybody that had dealt with mental illness. So we felt very alone in our journey through uh, the mental health system. 
um, I can only imagine how he must have felt if uh, mm -hmm. his dad and I felt very, uh, very lost in the system. And even though I work in healthcare and administration, I I had some insight into the system, but uh, uh, this was a big eye opener for us and an eye opener to the gaps that exist in the system. Um, Tyler was hospitalized uh, several times. Um, he had no problem admitting to himself that he wasn't well. He knew that. Mm -hmm. um, he just didn't understand um, why his peers and the people he was go asking for help, um, how they didn't understand or the, the discrimination and stigma that he faced were mm -hmm. un, unreal, unexpected. Um, we were often faced, um, let's say, with discrimination within the system, uh, but also in within our family and friends mm -hmm. and we felt very much alone. And that must be the one of the biggest motivators for you to start the Tyler Chislett Memorial Fund yes. and to become a mental health advocator mm -hmm. and to help fill those cracks that you experienced yourself in the system. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> after Tyler's death, um, I thought... I was going to change the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I thought that I was going to take on this beast. And um, I quickly learned that uh, it's much bigger than me. Um, and I decided to switch my focus more to um, talking about mental health and um, changing the language around mental health and the... Uh, Offering the availability for education for healthcare workers, frontline workers, um, creating initiatives for mental health awareness, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, connecting with other parents who have had mm -hmm. loss um, in the area. There are a lot of people. Um, I would dare to say that uh, there's nobody who hasn't been affected in some way or another. Um, by suicide or by mental illness. Um, one in five Canadians have a mental illness. Um, five in five Canadians have mental health. Mm -hmm. So there's a big difference between mental illness and mental health. And, um, and that's kind of what I want people to understand. Mm -hmm. um, when, we, when our kids are small, we teach them to brush their teeth and to floss and why... We do that is to have our good oral health, um, but we don't teach our kids about their mental health. And every day you wake up, you uh, your mental health uh, sh should be checked. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you know you're you're having a good day and why and how to understand that and how to uh, cope when things don't always go as planned. Uh, we need to introduce those um, those skills into our education system um, and talking about it is <clears throat> how that starts. I do strongly see a difference from my childhood mm -hmm. seeing TV programs and general acceptance of uh, making fun of someone with mental health issues yes. to the way the world is today mm -hmm. and I saw that shift I would say even as little as four years ago. Absolutely. And Absolutely. it's, I, I strongly feel we're doing a good job towards that end, but there's mm -hmm. lots of work left to do. Yes. Um, people like yourself are such huge. I think you have changed the world, Anne. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say that, um, especially in the Bonneville area, opening up and, um, and talking about your story, but also allowing yourself to be a face of a victim of mental health. Mm -hmm. and mental illness. Absolutely. Um, thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> I try, but like I say, it's a big, a big beast. Mm -hmm. um, the government, in my opinion, is one of our biggest gaps as we need them to um, 
especially in rural Alberta, it's difficult mm -hmm. to access resources. Uh, like the city has some great resources. Um, uh, being rural, unfortunately, um, for some people, that is not an option. They don't mm -hmm. have uh, have the resources to travel or um, are not in a place where, where that is, op like I say, an option. Um, we do have a great uh, healthcare team, a great group of physicians um, that um, support me in my advocacy for mental health. Um, we have also, since Tyler's death, there, um, there was a steering committee uh, created, which included uh, the school boards, the MD, the town, um, different stakeholders such as that, Covenant Health, Alberta Health Services, uh, the Primary Care Network, they all came together and as a team tried to identify gaps um, within our own community and also to share resources uh, to, to find out what everybody's doing so that they could better collaborate mm -hmm. as a team to help our youth. And uh, from that, the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Clinic was formed, um, which is an amazing resource. Uh, we're very blessed to have mm -hmm. such an amazing team of clinicians. Um, they see the last that I checked uh, on average 80 kids a year that they uh, process through the clinic. Um, yeah, and it, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to have in this community. Uh, so little things like that have, um, I guess, has, has brought mental health to the forefront. Um, and it's great that we encourage our kids and parents to talk about mental health, the uh, effects of mental health, mm -hmm. the, just making it um, a dinner time conversation. You know, it's not just how was your day, mm -hmm. it's like, how are you feeling and why are you feeling like that? And, you know, giving, like I said, giving kids and parents tools. So that was one thing that we <clears throat> struggled with. Um, when we brought Tyler to different facilities for treatment was that we were uh, left out of his care mm. because he was at that time 18. Um, we weren't given um, access to information, uh, which is difficult because I believe um, to support somebody you love, whether you're a parent, a grandparent, a support mm -hmm. person, um, you need that information, mm -hmm. and you need tools. You need to be given the tools to to support your loved one. And if you don't have that, um, you, you're just in the wind and just guessing. And um, as hard as it is uh, to say out loud, I I feel that I failed Tyler in that aspect because I didn't have. I didn't understand. <clears throat> I didn't understand mental health or, um, you know, or, and I knew nothing about it. It was a mystery to me. I was ashamed. Um, I didn't use our local system. I took him outside of this area because I didn't want everybody to know. Mm -hmm. um, when he was hospitalized, uh, trust me, nobody brings you casseroles when, or uh, knocks on your door with flowers when you are in that situation. Mm -hmm. It's not like um, other situations when kids get sick, you know, you have that support, there's no shame, there's, uh, yeah, it was very, uh, very difficult. I locked myself in my house and closed the curtains and that was, <laughs> I stayed there for a long time. Um, which, uh, yeah, I have to deal with, with, I have to live with that. I have to yeah. live with the fact that I didn't, um, I didn't know what to do and I didn't do the right things all the time. And that's, uh, that's awful. 
It sounds like you did the best with the resources that you had and hearing your story from like I'm a mom as well and listening to what you did for your son and recognizing, Hey, things are changing. And you recognize that with him mm -hmm. and you did the best you could, because I do know when it comes to small towns and it comes to the hard issues, there's that underlining mm -hmm. shame that comes with it. Yeah. That's yes. cloaked when you're in the yeah. anonymity of a big city. Mm -hmm. So I understand why you would do that, why you would choose to go elsewhere. I completely get that. Mm -hmm. And I hear you talking of your son with such love and doing right by him today in creating these programs. Do you feel the stigma has changed in any way since your experience, which was mm -hmm. just six, seven, eight years ago? Yeah, um, I would say yes to a certain degree. Um, Tyler was never ashamed. He's very intelligent. Mm -hmm. He was never ashamed of his illness, um, <clears throat> he understood that it was uh, an in intangible illness, but uh, that it wasn't his fault, like that, that it was his body, just like any other sickness. Uh, I did not understand that. And one of the, uh, the things he really struggled with was uh, why everybody else treated him so differently once they realized that he was dealing with mental illness. Um, so I would say that youth are definitely um, a lot more educated when it comes um, to mental health and, uh, and what to expect and support each other. Um, but I think, I feel like we've asked them to speak out and speak up and not to hide it and not to suffer in silence. But unfortunately, I feel like our resources have not caught up mm -hmm. to that. So kids are coming forward and speaking up and we are in a crisis. We are inundated with um, not just kids, but adults who, you know, are, who are presenting and asking for help. And there's just not enough resources. Let's talk about the Tyler Chislett Memorial Fund mm -hmm. and all of the wonderful things yeah. that it has done for not just our community, but it's extended <clears throat> um, and touched so many people's lives. Um, how, what was your first kind of, I guess, idea like, hey, let's, let's live on in Tyler's memory and give back to our community? It, actually, it wasn't my idea. Um, in 2016, um, the Bonneville Health Foundation held their annual gala, and I was called by the by the foundation and asked if this was something that we, as a family, would like to see, and how we would like to see that unfold. And um, I was floored. You don't always realize the impact somebody has on a community, but. Um, Tyler was an active volunteer with the foundation and the hospital for 15 years. So he volunteered in long-term care, he volunteered with all the galas and fundraisers. So a lot of people knew him and they thought that that might be a, <clears throat> a way to honor him. So um, at that gala, we, uh, Tim and I, my husband, spoke for a few minutes about Tyler and our experience and how we needed to um, advocate for resources mm -hmm. in rural Alberta. And we kick-started this fund with a small amount of money. Um, I wasn't sure where it was going to go from there. Uh, and the auctioneer uh, decided to challenge the audience by asking uh, anybody who wanted to support the fund to step forward and donate $500. And in... I'm not kidding. Five minutes, we had raised forty thousand dollars. Wow! It was breathtaking. Like I, I was so floored with um, with the generosity of the community, but it also was a big trigger to me that this is important to our community. Mm -hmm. um, these people did not hesitate to step up, and um, I feel it's because they've experienced, they've seen um, some form of 
mental illness and the need for more support. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the support that you've been able to facilitate through the Tyler Chislett Memorial Fund. Mm -hmm. um, some of that we were talking about um, giving training to local doctors here in our area on how to better assess and deal with teenagers who come in and young adults with mental illness. Yes, the, um, we offer education of any sorts to any physicians that are um, interested in attending or to continuing their education and improving their education. Any, not just physicians, but any frontline workers. Um, the special training in mental health for youth is a can reach program, it's called, and it's a six month uh, process. And to me, if a physician is willing to commit that time to uh, attain that training, um, then uh, on, we are totally on board to support that. And it just shows, it's things like that that uh, allow me the energy to keep going mm -hmm. with it. Um, also, um, when businesses like Overdrive or Lakeland Family Eye Care, Imperial Oil, there's so many companies that step forward and say, we want to give to this. Um, it's like, Wow, they, they haven't forgotten, you mm -hmm. know, they, they see the need and that is what, um, that is what gives me the energy to move past uh, the inability to get up every morning and face mm -hmm. life without our, without our child. One other thing that the Tyler Chislett Memorial Fund, among all, everything it's done so far, one thing that you're working on right now is giving kits um, having them available at the hospital, and these are mental wellness kits. So if mm -hmm. somebody came into the emergency room in a mental health crisis, this will help um, them and help the doctors as well. Yeah, we look at them. Um, this will be the third year of the Comfort Kit program. Um, the first few years, a couple of years, it was supported by um, the collaborative and donations from mm -hmm. the public. Um, as a a token, I look at it as a um, way to bridge the gap between a patient that's sitting in the emergency or being admitted mm -hmm. uh, in a crisis, uh, to bridge the gap between the healthcare provider and the patient because uh, it's terrifying. Uh, it takes a lot to, um, to present to a health facility uh, of any sort and say, I can't do this by myself anymore mm -hmm. because of the stigma, because of the discrimination, because of uh, the barriers that these individuals face on a daily basis. So when they do finally have uh, the courage to present, um, we thought that this would be a way to make a connection, to show that mm -hmm. patient that we care and by giving them some tools in their kit to make their stay a little easier. Um, so our kits will include uh, soft blankets. Um, I guess I, I should back up a moment. Mm -hmm. um, there will be two kits, one for 12 and under and then one for 12 and over. So um, each kit will kind of try to fit that age group but they're they're all basically have a uh, similar uh, premise behind them being uh, comfort providing that comfort to them to allow them to try to heal um, a little more peacefully so uh, fidget fidget toys warm blankets um, you know journals uh, like for the smaller kids, um, coloring mm -hmm. books that um, re that reflect the healthcare journey with mental health. Like there's so many resources out there, and uh, through our development of these kits, uh, the community has been phenomenal in helping us to put these together. So um, very proud to live 
in Bonneville. What's your hope for the Tyler Chislett Memorial Fund? Um, I would ideally like to see it not have to be anymore mm -hmm. <laughs> for um, mental health to be as as accepted and supported as cancer treatment mm -hmm. for um, it to receive the same empathy from uh, from caregivers and families alike. Um, that would be my ultimate wish would be that we could just not have it anymore. I guess. But uh, I think we're, we're far away from that at this time, but um, one step at a time. Do you have any advice for families who have a family member who's dealing with a mental health crisis or mental health illness? That's always the toughest mm -hmm. question uh, because I, uh, I struggle with my own mental health um, with trying to accept my failure or my perceived failure as mm -hmm. uh, a mom. Um, I try not to give advice, but I do tell moms and support people that I do speak to, to trust your instincts as, um, as a parent, those maternal instincts that we all have, trust that, listen to that, advocate for that person in your life that you love. They deserve that. They did not choose to be sick. Mm -hmm. um, it's not an option. It's not something that they can just get over. They can't just sleep it off or exercise it off. Or um, It is a devastating illness that uh, doesn't get enough attention, unfortunately. And the attention it does get is generally negative. So I would say definitely advocate. Don't give up. Love them. It's not their fault. And uh, just trust your instincts. If you aren't getting what you need from uh, a health provider, go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Ask for something else. Um, also be prepared. Um, it's, it's a journey. It's a long journey. Uh, it's hard. It's draining for everybody in their mm -hmm. lives. It's... Uh, you, know, you don't know what to expect. Um, yeah, it's, uh, that would be my, that would be my <laughs> bit of advice. And how can people get a hold of you, whether they want to donate or provide assistance to the Tyler Chislett Memorial, or if they need some help or support and guidance? Um, well, I'm personally available at any time. Um, I could give my number like if they want to contact me by phone. I do talk to a lot of parents um, over the phone. Uh, the, our in intention before COVID um, mm -hmm. was to start a support group um, for, initially it would be for parents who've lost children to suicide because it is a specific grief, mm -hmm. um, not minimizing any other loss, but um, a loss is traumatic as that, uh, not just to the person, but to the family, um, is unique. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of wanted to start it with that and then to um, grow it into a support for caregivers, but also for the people suffering, a peer, a peer support mm -hmm. program. Um, but COVID hit and um, we haven't been able to do that. So I do converse with um, people over the phone and they support me as much as I support them. Um, so I'm available at 780-573-4390 or you can email me at uh, thechislets3 at me.com. Or if you wanna learn more about the fund or support Tyler's fund, um, 
Tyler's Fund is housed under the umbrella of the Bonneville Health Foundation. Mm -hmm. So any donations made in Tyler's memory to that fund um, gets delegated to a specific account, but is supported um, by the foundation. And the foundation is a group of volunteers that are amazing. They support me in everything uh, that I try to do. <laughs> they, you know, and they allow me um, allow me to do this in a way where it's part of a not pro not for profit organization, which is um, amazing. I want to thank you for coming in and sharing your story, Anne. Yeah. I want to thank you for um, being brave with us today. And I think every time we speak on mental illness, is it wipes away the stigma more and more and more. So thank you for your advocacy and everything you do. I think you've touched so many lives in the community. And it's, if nothing else, the Tyler... Chislet Memorial Fund is so important to our community and doing so many wonderful things. So I thank you for that as well. Thank you. And I'll be sure to put all the contact information in our comments so people can get a hold of you and get a hold yes. of the fund. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Just uh, one last thought. Um, before Tyler died, he said to his dad that I'm not ready for this world. Uh, but in hindsight, I believe that the world wasn't ready for him. And uh, he didn't choose to die. Mm -hmm. He just didn't know how to stay any longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And hopefully with your help in the fund, like you said, one day we won't need it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That will be a happy day. Thank you, Anne. Thank you so much for having me. When we look at Project Gazelle, um, any female-owned business is at least 50% owned. They can um, be part of Project Gazelle. I was fortunate enough to be um, to start out with Project Gazelle right at the very start. What I found with Project Gazelle is it's helped us to build those soft skills um, that maybe then I've been able to bring back into the organization. We call them incubator spaces, but in a lot of ways they're actually co-working spaces. And so what a co-working space is, is maybe you're working from home and you just want to get out of the house and have connections with other people. There's equipment, for example, we're going to have some specialized lighting and that type of thing. So if you're selling a product and you're wanting to use your smartphone to take pictures, you've got the proper lighting for it. We do have computers and they're located in spaces where there's supports available to you as well. We also have gone with a concept called Cafe Inc. And that's where we've partnered with a cafe in a community, and they will be a Project Gazelle Cafe Inc. They can go in, we have what we call a portfolio. It's got a tablet in there. It's got information about the project. So for example, maybe you're down working in Wainwright one day and you can go into our Cafe Inc. there um, and access some of the Gazelle resources. And this is an entrepreneurship strategy that is meant to be at your pace. Um, it's meant to provide you with services and enhance your skill set um, at no cost to you. So I started CORE about a year and a half ago and just recently moved to this space about two months ago. I've always had a huge passion for juicing and anything health food related. I like to take something unhealthy and make it healthy and juicing's always been an easy way to get lots of veggies into my kids. I think for Bonneville it's a huge change because we didn't really have anything like that around here. So it was kind of a huge shock at first. Everyone was like, what is this? Lots of people didn't even know what cold pressed juice was. And now it's kind of just picked up and everyone's loving it. And hopefully it stays that way. Uh, so far, my favorite part has been my employees, my customers, just getting to meet new people and share what I love with the community. So what's different about us is we're cold pressed juice. Lots of companies run what's called a centrifugal juicer and so it can break down a lot of the nutrients and cause oxidization so you'll get kind of foam on your juice and it won't last as long. When you use a cold pressed juicer it preserves all the nutrients because there's no heat created and then you'll get like a nice thin way better flavored juice and it lasts a lot longer too. 
So we started with our four main flavors. We had our green, red, yellow, and orange. Yellow and orange are probably top sellers. For anyone that's kind of scared of the veggies and everything, they're both very sweet. Um, red and green are more tart. All our juices are packed with lots of veggies and then just a little bit of fruit to sweeten them up. Yes, our cleanse kits. Everyone's always loving those. Pre-order's best because it's hard to keep it in the fridge. Um, you get six drinks. So we have four cold pressed juice, uh, charcoal lemonade, and then a homemade almond milk. And basically you do a full day of just the drinks and it's kind of just a reset for your digestive system. So we also offer our core coffees. Everyone's obsessed with, so we do it iced or hot. Um, we make homemade cashew cream, we use MCT and collagen, local coffee from Elevate, and then we do a few new colored lattes. So we have a pink, which is a beetroot blend, a yellow, which is turmeric, and a green, which is matcha. Dr. Katherine King, ND, here in the Lakeland area, and I am going to talk about hydration. So, our bodies are about 60% water, and uh, the average Canadian drinks three and a half cups of water a day. Now, women are advised to drink about 11 cups of water a day, so that's two to three liters. So, many people are really lacking the amount of water that they're drinking. Mild dehydration can cause things like uh, fatigue, muscle cramps, low blood pressure, um, headaches, and classically people will notice if they are not drinking enough water and if they are dehydrated that their urine will be kind of dark and maybe a little bit stinky. So if this is you, easy fix, uh, drink more water. Uh, we may need to increase it during hot months when you're sweating a little bit more or when you are working out quite a bit, if you're sweating a little bit more, then you would want to up your water intake then as well. But more interestingly than the people who are just not drinking enough water, I think are the people I see in clinic who are drinking a lot of water and you know their urine is profuse and clear, they're peeing a lot and they think they're very hydrated, but they're still suffering symptoms of dehydration. And this can come from a few different places. So generally it is from an electrolyte imbalance. So the electrolytes that we're looking at are minerals, sodium, uh, magnesium, calcium, and potassium. These seem to be the biggest ones involved with helping your body to hold on to water. So you can be low in these from a few different directions. So I see a lot in women who have made some diet changes, maybe they've reduced their carbohydrates, they've reduced their grain intake, they're feeling a lot better, but but they're actually, you know, then they start getting kind of tired and, and I think some of them are actually dipping into ketosis a little bit by accident. Uh, and so very, very long story short, uh, when you reduce your carbohydrates, you are reducing your blood sugar spikes and reducing the insulin that you would release to counteract those blood sugar spikes. Insulin is a hormone that one of the things it does is it tells your kidneys how to hold on to salts and waters in your body. So if you are not eating any carbs and you're not releasing that insulin, this is why people who do the ketogenic diet get that keto flu. You can accidentally do this. Uh, even if you're not gunning for ketosis. So getting enough carbs in your diet can help you hold on to your electrolytes and hold on to your water. If you are gunning for ketogenesis, supplementing with a sugar-free electrolyte drink is a great idea to help curb that. Um, the other thing, so we just talked about the fact that insulin is a hormone and I see a lot of people who are under a lot of stress right now Maybe they're not feeling anxious, just sort of overall long-term stress. This is causing a little bit of a dysregulation in our cortisol, which is our stress hormone, which then messes with your insulin. And this can also cause a bit of an electrolyte imbalance. So very short, or very long story, as short as possible. Um, drink enough water, two to three liters a day. Uh, work on your stress management techniques, eat enough carbs, or if you're gunning to not eat carbs, supplement with some sort of an electrolyte beverage, one that doesn't have a ton of sugar in it, please. 
uh, or some sort of a mineral supplement. The one I like, this one covers most of the things. It's Magnesium Synergy. Uh, it's got magnesium, it's got potassium. I also supplement um, calcium separately. It's got a few other minerals that help you hold on to your electrolytes. That can be really nice. Uh, you can make your own electrolyte drinks at home again. A little bit of sugar is okay, but not a lot. And yeah, just make sure you're drinking either enough water or having enough salts in your diet to hold on to it. Muse Inspired in Cold Lake is not your average clothing store. You'll discover unique brands like Sandwich, Pavillon, Camp, Dex, Spiritual Gangster, and more. Accessorize your outfit with shoes, bags, outerwear, and jewelry. Find one-of-a-kind gift ideas and don't miss out on their monthly sip and shop. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram to get inspired. Muse Inspired in Cold Lake and online museinspiredboutique.com. Welcome back to the Jenna Colburn Show. So happy to be joined by Coach Shireen. Coach Shireen, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you today? Uh, really good. Doing really well, Shireen. And it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. You uh, are working with Project Gazelle. You're one of their mentors. Uh, what's your role there at Project Gazelle? Um, at Project Gazelle, I'm actually a certified life and health coach. So I help people figure out from the business point of view what they can do for themselves personally on the life and health side that's going to impact their business. So when I signed up for Project Gazelle, I had to answer some questions. I did this quick little intake. It took about half an hour max. And then they lined me up with different mentors and different people they thought would help me. You were one of them. Is that how it works for all the intakes at Project Gazelle? Absolutely. And it's so easy um, to just, you, you just chat with one of the girls that does the intake. They go through that stuff with you. And then they're like, Hey, I think you should see this person and this person. We're going to start with you there and they get you set up and away you go. And you do this um, service for free. Like the people who are coming yes. in, get your service for free. You yep. get an initial X amount of sessions with you. Yep, exactly. Five sessions with me. Uh, we do them weekly generally, although, you know, life happens. So there's some weeks that it doesn't work out, but for the most part, we do them, you know, five weeks in a row and we work through some stuff and I help you kind of find some clarity on how you manage looking after yourself as an entrepreneur on the personal side so that your business is affected in a positive way. Because the best way that we are going to manage business is to be very well personally so that it and entrepreneurs have have a real tendency to be all in on their business and they forget about looking after themselves and that can turn into a problem. So that's how come with the, with project Gazelle, we really wanted there to be that component. Well, I did want to talk about that because I think over the past year and some, while we're living through this pandemic, many business older owners are just hold on tight, hope for the best. And we've stripped away our personal lives and our personal concerns and really zoned in on our businesses. Uh, what are some tactics you would give a business owner who's going through, let's say, a really turbulent time to help care for themselves so they don't experience burnout? So for me, this has been an interesting time mm -hmm. personally on the entrepreneur side as well. And so for me, exercise is a big deal. I think that it's really important for us to find the activity, the self-care practice that you can do that gives you clarity in the moment. For me, when I am exercising hard, I get to a certain point and suddenly things start to tick through and I ask myself questions as I go. That can happen in a massage. It can happen in a drive with the music cranked up. It can happen out for a walk. But what are those things that really, what, what are those moments where you can relax enough that you can actually start to ask yourself the questions about where you're actually at where you can deal with what's actually going on for you and ask yourself those hard questions and get some clarity. For me, that's when I'm exercising. For other people, like I say, it can be a massage. It can be getting your nails done and you're just sitting there with the earbuds in. It can be a great playlist and you're just engaged with the music. I generally find for most people, they have to start sort of, it has to be a little bit detached from their everyday life because we can get distracted. So, so that's Yeah, that's I was going to say. 
Yeah. Sorry, Shereen, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, no, that's good. I was just going to say for myself, I get so busy, and there's so many times where I'm like, start the morning off saying, I'm going to do this, 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 and then for myself, I'm going to do that, and I think it's a female thing to do to take that element for myself and keep ticking it down lower and lower and lower on the priority list. Absolutely. How do we break out of this habit and put ourselves first? I think we have to know what we want and why we want it. And if what we want is to be really successful in business and to really survive, we have to understand how important the personal care side is. And it is finding that thing where you get that release from that stress and not necessarily where you find clarity and you find you can, you can ask yourself those questions and get some answers that can actually make a difference. So once you start to do that and you attach it to, I got a great result here from this, and we start to engage with that, then we start to flip that habit. And it is about being intentional. It is not just, you're just gonna make this happen. We can't throw water, mud at the wall and hope it sticks when it comes to this. This has to be, I'm making a decision, this is permanent ink. If I put myself in here, then the rest of this will work out because if I'm looked after, I will be able to manage this. So it is very much a decision and it's about being intentional and that's a dis that takes practice. It just takes Do you practice. see a difference in somebody who is looking after themselves versus someone like, can you tell right away when you speak to your clients, you're like, oh, I don't think you're looking after yourself right now. Absolutely. You can tell people I'm dealing with somebody right now who who called and hasn't been sleeping. And right away, I could tell just the way she was talking. It was very disjointed. She was sort of jumping from topic to topic. And that's not like her. And I'm like, so what's happening? <laughs> Mm -hmm. where's the self-care and she's like well I'm like where's your water where's your food where's your breathing where's your exercise those are four really standard things that we can do to look after ourselves physically and practically and right away she was like well none of that I'm in trouble and I'm like and then the sleeping starts to go so it becomes it becomes apparent really quickly when I start to ask them questions what's going well hmm pretty quickly they'll be like um they're trying to think of something that's going well and they struggle and then they get to, okay, so what's not going well? And it boom, 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 boom. And, and then I will start to ask the question, where's the food? Where's the water? Where's the breathing? Where's the exercise? Where are those things? Where is the self care? And, and it, yeah, really quickly into the conversation, I can tell. I read a meme recently, or I guess a Facebook post, if you will, that said, you know, self care is turning into this trendy word where people are like, Oh, self care. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, do this or that self care. And do you feel like people are abusing that word? A hundred percent. And I think that they're not looking at what real self care is. So real self care isn't going to the store and, and binge shopping or it's not binge eating. It's not, um, you know, what hours on the couch on a weekend watching Netflix. That's not actual self care. Self care is intentionally deciding that there's things that you can do to make your life better that line up with what you want to achieve and that serve you and that's actual self-care so treating you know so often we hear people talk about it, they're going to treat themselves with food well i'm not a dog or a horse i don't need to treat myself with food i need to treat myself with i feel good in my skin i'm confident i know that i'm looking after myself and and for that there's a reward and so the payoff is this and so i think that the self-care thing is totally getting thrown around like crazy but not necessarily being used in a correct sense What's the um, what's some advice for somebody who's on the go, super busy, who just can't stop? How do you get them just to slow down and stop when, when they're saying, you know, I can't, I got to do this, my responsibility is yada, yada, yada. How do you get them to yeah. slow down, Shireen? <laughs> so that's sometimes you have to sit down and go through your calendar and actually find out what is yours and what isn't. Because how many people get super busy and they pick up stuff that's not even theirs to do? So that's where we would do a clear the clutter exercise. So let's clear some clutter. Like it can be physical clutter. It can be calendar clutter. It can be the first thing that maybe needs to happen is let's take a look at this calendar. What's on your desk that shouldn't be on your desk? It's actually supposed to be on somebody else's. What are you owning that's not yours? And let's free up some time and make sure that that, 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 that would be the first thing is awareness. If we don't have awareness about where we can tuck it. We're not going to get it in there. 
Well, I want to announce to everybody today that you will be contributing to our Facebook group, which is the Jenna Colburn Show. So if you're looking for more tips from Coach Shireen, you can find them there and you can follow her on Facebook. But the best way to get a hold of her is through Project Gazelle. So if you're a female entrepreneur, you're a female business owner, and you own at least 50% of the business, you are entitled to Project Gazelle, which is absolutely free. And you'll also be treated to coach Shireen so <laughs> you can't go wrong can you <laughs> you can't you can't and it's super easy the phone number Jenna's gonna post it the phone number and the mm -hmm. and the and the Facebook page it's just Project Gazelle the phone number is 780-875-5458 and it's projectgazelle.ca so super easy to find super easy to get plugged in and get engaged with Project Gazelle we cannot recommend it enough I have access their services and do um am in the process of that with them as well it is fantastic and it is free and don't we That's love the that part. <laughs> that is the best part um so many expenses these days that free yes. is yeah and free and asterisk no conditions <laughs> exactly and free going to affect your business in a positive way mm, we need absolutely. that right absolutely yeah absolutely uh thank yeah. you so much for joining me again on the jenna colborne okay. show you'll be seeing more coach shireen throughout uh the many months to come thank you see ya Thank you so much for joining me today on the Jenna Colborn Show. I have to thank our very special guest, Ann Chislett. You can find out more about the Tyler Chislett Memorial Fund. I've put some links in the comments for you, so go follow those and get in contact and reach out if you need to. You can also save it for later and join our group on Facebook. So we have this very special Facebook group where we do a lot of post-show discussions and we have a nice community growing there. Please come join us in the group. I'll also put it in the comments right there for you. And a big thank you to Shireen Sutherland with Project Gazelle. Project Gazelle is just an amazing organization. I can't just say enough great things about it. You're gonna find like the tools and resources that you need as a business owner to really advance your company even further and advance your business, you can check them out at projectgazelle.ca. I want to say thank you to Core Juice for letting us in your business to come check it out. And of course, my friend, Dr. Catherine King, ND. Thanks for all the great tips. Catherine will also be in next Wednesday. So make sure you check out the show next Wednesday for a different tip. She's going to be talking about her backwoods hunting or hiking, sorry, adventures with Susie O'Connor. That's all coming up next week on the Jenna Colborne Show. Make sure you tune in Wednesdays at 2 o'clock on Lakeline Connect.